Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. Couldn't make it to the city today into my office, so I'm here in my apartment. The reason being the train that I usually take had some signal issues going underneath the Hudson River. We all know what that really means. It's the dolphins. They've managed to breach the tunnel once again, causing millions of dollars of damage. Anyway, in my last video, we took a look at the various systems in the Halo Mjolnir armor system and discussed how feasible some of these technologies in the suit were and how close we are here on Earth to replicating this kind of technology. We mainly focused on the power source, shields, and neural interface. And just those three topics took me 15 minutes to cover because these suits are actually really well thought out and researched. Now, I want to do a part two because there are a lot of other elements that I didn't manage to cover, so that's what we're going to be doing today. So last episode, we briefly mentioned that the Halo Mjolnir suit weighs roughly half a ton or in metric around half a Fiat 500. Now that's quite impressive. Even though the Spartan 2 is about the size of a large NBA center, the Mjolnir suit doesn't seem to be big enough to weigh as much as half a car, especially when you look at how fast Master Chief can move in the suits. But by doing a little research, I found out that the Spartan armor is actually made out of a titanium alloy. The fusion core reactor we talked about in our last episode gives the suit a tremendous amount of power, and therefore the motors in the suit are able to shift around such heavy weights. This means saving weight when it comes to armor and protection isn't as important as you would see in our own military. Now, modern armor here on Earth is usually made up of a few components. First, there's soft armor, usually made of a ballistic fabric like Kevlar. This layer of armor is designed to catch bullets and absorb their energy. They're usually pretty good at stopping smaller rounds with less energy behind them. This basically is what most law enforcement officers are equipped with. Underneath that Kevlar layer, some more combat-oriented individuals will wear hard armor, which is usually made up of ballistic plates. Those are made out of some kind of ceramic composite material that can stop larger and more energetic rounds. And better yet, these materials are still relatively light compared to the amount of protection they provide. A Kevlar vest can be as light as 5 pounds, add two ceramic plates into a plate carrier, and that's around 20 pounds. Ceramic composites are roughly 5 times stronger than steel, but 70% lighter. The problem with this type of armor is that it becomes compromised after repeated hits. It's just not designed to continuously take a beating. But fortunately, in the Halo world, weight restrictions are less of an issue, and titanium is used for the entire outer shell of the suit from the helmet to the boots. These type of plates are impervious to most small arms fire and can even stop armor piercing rounds. The outer layer of the titanium shell is covered in a refractive coating to help disperse heat from plasma weapons. Still, plasma weapons, especially high powered ones fired at a close distance, can make it through the armor in just one shot. Now this is a pretty straightforward piece of technology that we can easily replicate here on Earth. With more and more advanced anti-tank weapons and explosives being smuggled into the hands of terrorist groups and insurgents, the United States military has repeatedly upgraded the armor on their armored vehicles, including the M1 Abrams main battle tank. This has drastically increased the weight of these vehicles to the point where they are passing the maximum loads the vehicles were designed to carry in the first place. One option for the M1 Abrams tank is to replace the steel hull turret and suspension system with a lighter material like titanium. Titanium is also routinely used as armor on aircraft where saving weight is an even larger concern. The A-10 Warthog is fitted with a titanium tub that surrounds the cockpit. It's impervious to small arms fire and can even stop anti-material rifle rounds. So we can more or less make a master chief suit out of titanium, but the real question is, can we power it? Beneath that armored plate, the Spartan II wears a titanium nanocomposite bodysuit, which is both protective and also flexible. Titanium nanocomposites are a real thing, according to <coughs> scholarly research articles I tried to read. But unfortunately, I had no idea what the hell I was reading, and my brain shut down and I passed out from exertion. So, here's my limited and basic understanding of what titanium nanocomposites is. You take very tiny amounts of titanium and fuse them with another material that has, um, you know, characteristics you're looking for, in this case, flexibility, and then you create a kind of composite material that has the strength of titanium, but also the flexibility of the other material you're mixing it with. The problem is there's all types of different titanium nanocomposites that you can create and we're not really sure what is used in the Spartan suit and what we're capable of creating here on Earth. Now, graphene is something you guys might have heard of in the news several years ago. It was hailed as this type of super material that one day would be woven into clothing as a nanocomposite. 
It's said that a single atomic layer of graphene is lighter than paper, yet 200 times stronger than steel, and it's also an amazing electrical conductor. The only problem with graphene is that it's a bit brittle and susceptible to fracture, which is why they're trying to mix it with other materials that will decrease the brittleness of it. And its most basic form, I guess, is not all that different from creating different types of metals, like adding different alloys into gold, for instance, to make it a little bit stronger. There's a lot of magic going on in between a Spartan's body and their armor suit. Now that I said it, it kind of sounds weird. Anyway, there's a material called hydrostatic gel, and it's very important in helping keep a Spartan safe and comfortable. This gel not only regulates temperature for a suit, it can also change in density to conform to a wearer's body shape. The gel can also be pressurized in the event of high velocity impacts or high gravity maneuvers. So it's climate control, a pressure suit that an aviator might wear, and an airbag all at the same time. This type of intelligent gel that can adapt to different situations is actually a very intriguing idea and not all that unrealistic. Engineers at Rutgers University have developed a 3D printed gel that reacts and moves when fed an electrical signal. Hydrogels have many different applications beyond just that. They can potentially be used to replicate human tissue in the future. There currently are also bandages that use hydrogels to heal wounds. Scientists have even used hydrogels to replicate the organ within an electric eel that produces electricity. So they've created sort of a bio power plant. The one problem with hydrogels, at least in this situation, is that it offers limited protection. It's basically 70% water. Now for any of you motorcycle riders out there, you might be familiar with another substance known as orange goo, created by a company called D30. So they take this orange goo and they make armor inserts that can go into your motorcycle jacket or your pants and they protect your knees, elbows, shoulders, back, you know, any kind of vulnerable area. And they're really soft and flexible, so they're not all that uncomfortable to wear, but when something hard hits them, they actually harden up themselves and prevent any injury to your body. So, in a way, you know, with these two technologies that I've talked about combined, we're not all that far from creating a hydrostatic gel. Now, we just talked about how hydrogels are being used in bandages to help keep certain wounds covered, but Halo actually goes another step with a miraculous material known as biofoam. While the suit itself doesn't have any biofoam inside of it, it has a biofoam injector port so that medics can quickly access a Spartan and give them first aid if they need it. Biofoam is a pretty crazy material that is capable of sealing a wound, stopping the bleeding, disinfecting that wound, and then numbing the entire area. Think of it as an immediate scab. Now, biofoam will eventually dissipate, but it'll keep a wounded individual stable enough until they reach real help. This material will be especially useful if, say, a hard-to-reach artery was severed by a bullet fragment. If you've ever seen Black Hawk Down, you know what I mean. We haven't really developed this kind of magical foam just yet, but there is a company called RevMed X, and they've developed a tool named Xstat. It's basically a syringe that injects multiple tiny sponges into a wound, which then expand and stop the bleeding. When tested on a pig with a gaping wound, this syringe was able to stop the bleeding within 15 seconds. Then another company created a syringe that injects polyurethane liquid into the body that rapidly hardens into a block that also prevents further bleeding. This can also be quickly removed by a surgeon. This is actually a really big deal. The majority of deaths in combat are related to hemorrhaging, especially from injuries that are hard to reach, like the back hawk down scene that freaked me out as a kid. If a first responder is able to stem the bleeding from a gunshot wound within the first 10 minutes, survival rates go up drastically. If a patient can be stabilized within the first hour and reach a medical facility, their survival rate also increases drastically. But on a battlefield, a trained medic and doctor isn't always going to be available or within 10 minutes of a wounded individual. Now, the average soldier is trained in first aid, but I'm pretty sure a massive gut wound or, um, you know, tear to an artery is way beyond their skill level. But a syringe that injects clotting material is an equalizer. Almost anyone can use it, basically, and stabilize a wound long enough for real help to arrive. I'm honestly astonished after doing all this research about the Spartan suit, especially when I got to the biofoam. I thought to myself, there's no way this is actually a real thing. But the writers at Halo have clearly done their research on almost every aspect of this armored suit. Almost everything in the suit is believable, and either in development or at least theoretically possible. 
So hats off to you guys. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to check out our last episode. We talk about some really cool stuff like fusion reactors and neural interfaces that allow our brains to command exoskeletons. Anyway, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.